ICMA. We've already featured quite a lot of the mainstream stuff from the International Motorcycle Expo that was held in Milan at the end of November. But since it's Christmas, my gift to you and myself is to take a look at some of the more interesting, exotic, unusual bikes that were on display there. And to start, here's a new model that we featured in our news right at the beginning of this year and that I couldn't help but notice as I hurried past focused on one of the big manufacturer stands I could see in the distance. There were only two bikes on the stand, but that's all it needed because it's such a striking looking machine. It's made in Finland. It's a startup company that has been funded by the guys who design and build it. It's a proper shoestring effort. It's electric and it's different enough and brave enough to deserve to be a success. Look at that amazing hubless rear wheel the motors in there as well. The batteries in the body of the bike and with city use you should, apparently, see around 300 kilometers of range and on the highway that would equate to nearer 200 kilometers. Ride it like you stole it and it's probably nearer 100 k's but these aren't bad numbers, they more than match up to the opposition. The electric powertrain puts out the equivalent of just under 110 horsepower but the utterly insane torque number is the one that you won't forget. It is, so it's claimed, a thousand newton meters. <laughs> yeah, that should put a grin on your face, all right. Top speed has been limited to 180 k's an hour and the acceleration is a suitably vague and somewhat mysterious 0 to 100 in under four seconds. A DC charger will give you 100 kilometers of range in just 15 minutes, while a home charger will fully recharge the battery in four hours. The battery is big, but the weight is kept nice and low and manageable by an aluminium frame. Orders have already been taken and deposits paid on plenty of bikes, but production has been delayed, as it has for so many businesses, by the shortage of certain electronic supplies. I'm sure a young, small startup like this comes way down at the back of the queue when they're up against giants like Mercedes or VW or Apple or Samsung. With a bit of luck, that COVID-inspired restricted supply will resolve itself before too long. Hopefully, I'll arrange a meeting with the passionate team behind this project next year and bring you a first riding impression. Let's stay now with electric propulsion for a moment and consider a very different kind of modular, minimalist machine designed with working practicality very much in mind. Cake a name that obviously means Don will be prepared to kill me in order to be the first to test it. These are motorcycles that are designed and produced in Sweden. You can sort of see that they have a Scandinavian IKEA kind of look to them. They are both unusual and cute. Can a bike be cute? Anyway, they are primarily for working environments and hence their modular capability means adapting to different professional requirements is, is quick and easy. They are actually already present in small numbers in South Africa where their quiet electric motors are being used and further developed in an anti-poaching role. Given that the bikes start from just over 50,000 Rand and can be modified to carry more batteries for increased range or adapted to carry more cargo, they have a lot of potential uses for businesses in the wild but also of course in the wilds of the city. Whether you're a plumber or a delivery rider, a real estate agent or a farmer, they offer extreme practicality along with a handy bit of feel-good eco-friendliness to go with it. Let's change the pace a bit, actually a lot, and move to the Bimota stand where the Italian manufacturer, reborn under new owners Kawasaki, unveiled a model that you will be delighted to learn still guzzles petrol. You may remember, and here it is to remind you, that this new phase in the company's history was announced at the previous 2019 edition of ICMA with the Radical Tazy H2. With Kawasaki's supercharged H2 engine and Bimota's trademark weird front end and a 1.3 million rand price tag, it was a suitably spectacular way to get yourself noticed. The new model is the KB4. Actually, there's two KB4s because there's also a KB4RC, which is a naked version with RC denoting race cafe. We've known that the bike was on its way and in fact was overdue because of COVID induced delays because when the Tazy H2 was unveiled in 2019, there was already a sketch showing what the next Bimota, the KB4, would look like. 
This will be a much more realistically priced bike, but that's in bimotor terms, so don't expect it to be cheap. Where the Tazy H2 was pretty much all about the engine, this is more of a celebration of chassis design. The specialism that has always defined this small volume manufacturer that takes donor engines and rehouses them in exquisitely crafted and often superior handling packages. The standout numbers on the KB4 concern its wheelbase and that is incredibly short. It's a full 60 mm shorter than Kawasaki ZX-10R for instance and that's already cutting edge sport bike territory. To put it another way, this one litre inline four cylinder sport bike is only 10 millimetres longer in the wheelbase than a Honda CBR300R. You get the point, it's ridiculously short. The front wheel has been moved backwards because, and this is the clever bit, the radiator has gone from in front of the engine and is now found at the rear under the seat. Saving so much room at the front of the bike hasn't infringed on space at the rear, so the beautiful billet aluminium swing arm is still long, and that speaks well as to rear grip and general suspension behavior. The frame overall is steel tubing with billet aluminium plates where the swing arm mounts. The engine itself, which comes from Kawasaki's Z1000, isn't anything to write home about in terms of power with just 140 horsepower available, but it's the agility of the bike that will be the KB4's calling card. The looks are distinctive, but certainly not traditionally pretty. The round headlight sets it apart from the current crop of squinting sport bikes and also harks back to Bimota KBs of the past, but it's the air scoops that grab most of your attention. They're not for any forced induction for the engine, but are rather to direct air around the bike's flanks to that new radiator position at the rear. The final number to hint at an entertaining handling package is the 194 kilogram wet weight, making it handily lighter than the latest crop of Japanese superbikes. And to finish the last episode of 2021, here's a sneak preview of the South African police's new motorcycle. It's from American manufacturer Zero, and it runs on electricity. And so it's a statement by the South African government that they will be completely on top of the electricity generating issues the country is experiencing by April 1st next year. If they aren't, then there will be no police bikes on the road, so the pressure's on. Thank you for watching us in 2021. We'll see you all again next year. Here's hoping it's a good one for our two-wheel community, but for now, cheers and see you then.